and welcome back. And there is the red light. Mm -hmm. I knew there was a red light. <laughs> Aren't you shocked? See, my director, my director, my camera lady back there, she didn't know there was a red light. There's a red light. Anyway, it's now time to get to work. Welcome back. We're having fun. This is all about having fun. This is Evie Clausen. Evie Clausen is the owner of Colorado Pawn and Julie. Pawn and Julie. My New York accent, I have a tendency to say porn. We don't want to do that. So, hi Evie. Hi. How's a teeny tiny little kid like you end up in the pawn business? A very funny story. Um, if you had asked us 16 years ago that Steve would be working in a pawn uh, chain. Who's Steve? Stores, my husband. Oh, the honey. Oh, yes. My other half. Um, and let alone us owning a pawn store, we would tell you when pigs fly, would that happen? Well, I'm here to show you that my crystal pig reminds me, never say never. never so say never. it's one of the best businesses that we have ever been a part of. Uh, with the people you meet and the people that you can help, we absolutely love it. How did you get into it, though? Well, you know, Steve, like I said, was working with a, a chain pawn um, company and was being taken all over the place in order to do that. Uh, living, we moved up to Stewart in 2002 and happened to see a pawn store there on the corner, which we always passed, you know, with it being right there in Stewart, Monterey. And, uh, you know, one day Steve says, wouldn't it be fun to have our own? And went in and talked to the owner at that time, and he wasn't ready to sell. Lo and behold, uh, a few years later, Steve gets a phone call and says, I'm interested in selling, and the rest is history. Uh, we bought that store, and then two years after buying that, uh, we opened up our own store in Port St. Lucie. So now we have two locations, one in Stewart and one in Port St. Lucie. And those of you who know, that's her tagline. <laughs> she has two locations. Yes, we do. And you never know what treasures you'll find when you come through our doors. That's right. How does, so. a, how does a pawn store work? You know, um, the main thing that we need to do is build a strong relationship with the community um, to where they could come in, we, we build it and we maintain it for loans and for retail. Um, a lot of working Americans find themselves um, in an unpredictable, uh, possibly low on cash, you know, maybe something has happened and um, you can't get the short term loans and the small loans through a banking facility. So that's what we're here for. Uh, they would come in and give us a piece of value. We will evaluate it for the loan, describe how much we can give to them, and um, then they can go out, they can pay their rent, they can uh, buy a, a tank of gas, truthfully, you know, for some of them, um, pay the electricity bill, or they can even pay their payroll. I mean, we have uh, smaller short-term loans up to bigger short-term loans. It just depends on what our customer needs at that time. Now, when you say a loan, when you think of pawning something, you think about you get the ticket, and you get to redeem that ticket if things go right for you. Yes. How does that work? Um, a lot of people think that when they come in, uh, the perception is is that once people pawn something, which pawn equals a loan, you know, the pawn business was back even in the cowboy uh, stages. That was the first bank. You know, somebody would come in and give something of value, and then they would get the money for it. But back to what you have said is that we have 70 to 75 percent of our people come in and pick up what they have left um, in order to get that short-term loan, which is amazing. It, it, it truly is amazing. It's just a collateralization. It's just a collateral piece of, um, you know, it, usually it's a piece of jewelry or it could be um, it could be a motorcycle, it could be a bicycle, something that is worth something that would be able to give them the money. Of course, um, we all see, you know, the, the pawn on TV. All right. And the, from Las Vegas. Yes. Um, how many times do people come in and they just want to sell something? Well, we have that too. Uh, you know, that is the other side of our business to where um, a lot of people just say, look, I don't have any more use for this. Um, I'd like to, to, you know, to go in and sell it to you. So um, what we do is with that end of the business, eBay is our best friend. Now, when I say that, it's when we look it up on eBay, it's not for what things are selling for, it's what they have sold for. This kind of gives us a guideline that we can turn it and show the clients that when we um, give a particular price for the item, 
that we can say, well, this is what we use, and it, it's black and white right in front of them. We don't just pull it out of thin air. So you allow the marketplace we allow to the rule marketplace, yes. in terms of the pricing. Right. And everybody seems to be coming. It's, it's, an, it's an objective source of evaluation. It's, exactly, and it's something that we can give. Like if you came in and gave something and you thought, well, you know, I paid this much for it. Well, you know, understand that you're not going to get what you paid for it. But it also gives us a black and white site to go to to say, well, this is what it's listed for uh, on, on eBay, but this is what it has sold for. Well, if I have, for example, a $20,000 Rolex, mm -hmm. what would be the usual and customary percentage that a person could walk out with? I mean, if they need five grand to start a business and they're using that Rolex, right. Rolex let's say, to pay the printing bill or whatever mm -hmm. to get their business started... Um, what would be the percentage on something like that? Well, there again, it, it all depends. It depends on the model. It depends on the year. It depends on the condition. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. I mean, we have given up to, I would say, probably 4000 or more on a Rolex. So, um, and then people, you know, would come back and get it. And all we do is charge 20%, which is lower than most. No, as a rule of thumb, a usual and customary, something that people can depend on, is 25% a good number for jewelry as well as Rolexes and motorcycles, as you mentioned? What do you mean by that? If they bring something in that's worth $10,000, can they pretty much rely on maybe getting $2,500? Uh, you know, there again, it all depends on the circumstances and what do they need the money for. And we also value it on, do we feel like you're going to be coming back or not? Is this something that's so tangible to you? that um, if you're doing a loan that you will be coming back to, you know, um, to pick it up. So those are some of the things that we have to take into factor as well. I see. Now, of course, the pawn industry is a very old industry. It's an industry that mm -hmm. came over from Europe uh, when this country was first founded and was, you know, in, goes back to medieval times uh, with the three balls above, yes. the, above the door. Um, how it, it's got it in the past it's had a shady kind of uh, reputation how do you go about in today's with today's technology being available to you and the relationships that you might have with right. different governmental agencies how do you make sure that the products that come into your store are not stolen you know that is an excellent question and one that is asked a lot um, our biggest um, conflict that we have at, as being a pawn store, I like to say store, is that um, changing people's perception of exactly what we do. Uh, when you walk into our stores, one of the things that you can expect is cleanliness, it's organized, and uh, we have experienced people behind our counters that will be able to help you uh, on what you're doing. As far as something coming in that is stolen, that's always a possibility, but our, um, what we usually do is ask people, you know, some very straightforward questions. How did you come with this? Especially if it's somebody that might be coming in that's much younger and has a two carat diamond. You know, how did you obtain this? And what does it mean to you? And, you know, different things along those lines. Um, if we have any inclination that it might be stolen, we will pass on that item. However, there are times that things have come in that are stolen. But with that said, we work extremely close with the Sheriff's Department. Anything that we take in, uh, whether it's a pawn or a buy, is put on a list and it is sent to the Sheriff's Office nightly. So if somebody has reported a um, item that is missing, it is usually matched up with the sheriff's department and that person will be caught because everybody who comes into pawn or anybody who comes in to sell we get their id and they are fingerprinted so oh okay so my my suggestion is is if you have stolen something and you don't want to get caught don't go to a pawn shop <laughs> <laughs> now that so. that brings up something else i was thinking about is when just walking in the door is a whole different experience when going into Colorado Pond. Tell people what they can expect when they walk right from the minute they get to the front door. The first thing you're going to expect when you get to our front door is you're going to have to be buzzed in. 
And a lot of people say, well, if it's so safe, why do I have to be buzzed in? We live in a completely different era of time now to where we have desperate people out there. Our world has changed. So our buzzing in is for the safety of our employees as well as it is for the safety of our customers. The next thing you're going to first notice off is that it's very clean and it's very organized. Your eyes will immediately go to our jewelry counter, which that's where my eyes go to. Um, we have a lot of sparkle. We have, um, you know, we, w we have anything from... Is bling a good word? Bling is an excellent word, but we have anything from... Uh, diamonds to power drills to um, Rolexes to fishing poles. Sure. We have all, all of our employees are very knowledgeable. They're trustworthy. Uh, if you brought something in and we didn't think we could do anything for you, we will be honest with you. We would even tell you, why don't you go and try other places? And, and I can tell you the majority of the time they do come back to us. Well, Evie, I want to good deals. I, I want to thank you for coming today. Well, it's been very you. interesting. I've learned a lot about the pawn industry, and I wish you a lot of luck. And I'm sure we'll see you at all the events and the the networking events and the the, you the will. different uh, charitable events that we have in town. I know you do a lot of things with charity. We, we can we talk about much. that. We can talk about that the next the time. next time you yes. come on our show. Maybe you come on a regular basis, like well, Rick, and bring some of your items. I like that. So, so just remember, don't drive by. Stop on in and see what treasures you can find. And we'll be right back.